Thanks, Mark.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the public forum being held in the council chambers for Monday, the 26th of September. This council, this public forum is being audio recorded for administrative purposes. By speaking at the public forum, you agree to being recorded. Please ensure that if and when you're speaking at this public forum, that you are respectful to other people and use appropriate language. Albury City accepts no liability for any defamatory or offensive remarks or gestures made during the course of this public forum. Item two, conflict of interest declarations received by the chair and Mr. CEO. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. One conflict of interest declaration received for the public forum and will also apply to the council meeting later on from Councillor Callaghan. The nature of the conflict is non-pecuniary, less than significant. The description of the conflict is that a family member lives in Sackville Street. The item uh, relates to item uh, three in public forum um, and 13.1 in the council meeting to do with the um, um, child care centre in Sackville Street. Um, the action that Councillor Callaghan intends to take is to stay in the chamber and participate in the in the debate and, and vote later on. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you, Mr. CEO. On to our speakers. Item 3.1, we first have Mr. Andy Billet in relation to the development application 10.2021.38949.1, the Child Care Centre in Sackville Street, Albury. He's speaking who does not support Council's preferred recommendation. Andy, please come forward for your five minutes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the council for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of um, 125 people who signed our petition against uh, the proposal and 25 people or families who took the time to write written submissions against the proposal. Um, as a group, we're at the firm belief that this is a, a poor proposal in the position it is in Sackville Street. Um, I want to draw your attention initially to some newspaper articles of May that state that uh, Sackville Street is one of the most dangerous streets in Albury. Uh, I think uh, Mayor King might have been at one of these um, events and uh, they thought it was such a, a, an important issue they reproduced a second article a day later. I can't for the life of me understand how that's not taken precedence over the whole issue of this proposal. 
I've lived on the corner of Sackville and Pearl Street for 34 years. I've seen plenty of bingles, no one killed, which has been excellent. But the traffic build up over the last few years has been astronomical. Uh, the TAFE College has got more students and they seem to leave around about three o'clock. They get there when the kids are arriving as well. And the uh, testosterone levels of some of those blokes driving cars, the young blokes uh, is over the top. They speed up and down Pool Street, Sackville Street, getting to classes late. It's an area where an accident is waiting to happen. The, the other issues regarding the, the proposal of the parking, there's five parking spots available. Four of those are for uh, people who are going to be teaching in the centre. There's one uh, disabled park, and there's one for people being dropped off, kids and mothers but and fathers being dropping off kids. 24 kids at a time, they'll come in five or 10 minute uh, intervals maybe, but the amount of traffic that is going to come down and up Sackville Street, park on either sides of the road. You've got uh, cement mixing trucks, you've got brick delivery trucks coming down Sackville Street now. It is just horrendous to think that anyone could think this is a good idea to have this proposal in this position. Everyone has stated no one's against another childcare centre. I'm a grandparent. I take my kids some uh, nearly twice a week around to Elmer Street kindergarten I can drive off into their car park I can walk the kids in I can get back in my car and I can come out and get back onto the street easily and safely every time this won't happen at this proposal <coughs> if we take a real look you get like six people there at a time where, where are they going to park on Sackville Street on the road on either side of the road or in people's driveways, oh, I'll only be a couple of minutes, I'll duck in. Will they park on the nature strips, council nature strips that we look after on behalf of the council? Traffic is the thing that, in my opinion, and I think a lot of the people here, that should be the primary rejecter of this proposal. The, the stated changes to the proposal, uh, parking, uh, I don't see any any old parking alterations. Uh, another issue they've, they've addressed is the, the noise levels. They're going to put two metre high acoustic panels at the rear of, of, this, of the section of the building. What about both sides, two metres high? What are the panels going to look like? Uh, they're going to change the, uh, the ground finish outside so it's more in touch with Sackville Street. Well, Sackville Street's asphalt and concrete. I don't know what they're talking about there. Um, once again, my final issue is it just can't, can't be there without an accident happen, happening. I wouldn't want to be in a position to make a decision that would cause a fatality or a permanent disability for the sake of this issue. We need uh, more kindergartens and kids for places for kids to go. This isn't the place. Right Thank on you time. for your time. Thank you, Mr. Bellet. Any questions, councillors, while you're there or happy with that? Thank you very much, Mr. Bellet. Next up. Thank you. We could just... Have a bit of decorum in the gallery, please. Um, next up, Ms. G Georgina Anatune, and she will be joined by Gary Saliba, uh, the applicant for item 13.1, and that same development application 10.2021.3894.9.1, the childcare centre in Sackville Street, speaking in support of Council's preferred recommendations. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, a summary of the points I'd like to raise for our application, that there's significant demand for childcare places in Albury wodonga that the DA will provide 24 childcare places, which is a small number of places, but nonetheless much needed, that the DA complies with all of Council's LEP and DCP policies and guidelines, including on-site 
car parking. The DA is supported by Council's planning and traffic engineering staff with amended plans provided to account for community forum feedback in regard to car park design and fencing. And we'd be running a centre that would comply with all the regulations. In terms of context, um, there's increasing demand from the community and government for quality centres to be opened and provide childcare and early childhood services. The New South Wales government has mandated, I'm sure you've heard, their policy for the provision of early childhood services for all children below the age of five years old. This centre will assist Aubrey to deliver on its government policy. The centre will support Aubrey to have the quality facilities and services that will support its working families. In terms of intent, the early childhood service is to be, in, is to be established as an educational centre, focusing on the individual education and development of needs of two to five-year-old children. An alliance with Charles Sturt University and Albury TAFE will be sought to enable students to undertake workplace experience and also develop the staff that will be selected to work at the centre. Networks will be developed with local primary schools <coughs> to support transition to school. The aim will be to establish an early childhood service with an ASEQA rating of excellence in due course. In terms of experience, my wife's had 17 years operating a boutique early childhood centre in Sydney. Um, she's had experience with the children who's presented in the initial years of her service and found that they are now highly successful in their lives. And she wishes to continue in that teaching mode and development of a childhood centre, early childhood centre in Aubrey um, as we've described. The proposed location provides a surface to all of Aubrey as it's positioned in a central location with easy access. And the access has been designed such that it complies with the safety requirements of council. We wouldn't be setting up a centre otherwise. Otherwise, as, the, as Andy's pointed out, there is dangers there. But we, we believe with council's guidance that the centre is positioned well enough to enable the flow of traffic and the safe movement of cars and people. There'll be a rigorous selection to, uh, to select highly motivated and experienced educators that are sensitive to the ever-changing needs of children. They'll be required to continually design and implement individualized learning outcomes for each child so that they reach their expected potential by the time they leave the center. All aspects of the service, whether indoor or outdoor, will be based on play-based learning. The goal is to build and operate a service that looks, feels, and sounds like any other residential building in the street. The outdoor surroundings will be populated with gardens and trees and will provide a teaching resource. When viewing the centre from the street, it will resemble a house like any other in the area. The architects have designed the placement of trees, shrubs, and pathways to deeply reflect a home garden. Trees have been chosen to complement others nearby. The desired outcome is that children and their parents and guardians feel that the centre is like a home to them. And on viewing 14 other centres in Albury, most of them were positioned in residential areas with standard fencing. Our project will exceed the requirements to ensure that the service is welcomed in the area. The development application complies with all council regulations. All reports that were requested by council were completed and the proposed project position all comply with planning, design, and safety regulations. The centre has been designed to have minimal impact on the surrounding community. And we've approached all surrounding neighbours and provided them with the opportunity to discuss and design the plans and vision. We've also provided the opportunity to work with neighbours to address concerns that they may have about the development as to achieve a win-win outcome. As stated in the DA, the centre will operate from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. Children can be dropped off between 7 and 9.30 a.m. and picked up between 3 to 6 p.m. However, unlike schools, there is no bell restricting parents to deliver and pick up children within a tight deadline. There is flexibility for parents in this process and we'll work in collaboration with parents and their needs to stagger drop off and pick ups. There are seven car spaces that will be available on the sites. Parents will be expected to park on site for safety and will enter and exit the service in a forward direction, ensuring maximum safety. With staggered times of children delivering drop off over a two and a half pe hour period, there'll be ample space for parking within the service. 
and we can't actually deal with a large influx of parents all in one go. They need to be staggered to be able to deal with the needs of the children and the parents. Thank so over, you. over a two and a half hour period with 24 children, there's ample time to deal with a large uh, flow of people over a period of that time. Thank you, Mr Saliba, for your presentation. I'll leave it now to councillors if they have any questions. <clears throat> Councillor Glacken. Thank you. Through you, um, my understanding is that the proposal, having I to think of the right document I read, the proposal is that you will um, uh, put the sound fence up, yep. for want of a better term, the sound fence, uh, and at, after it's been installed, you will then uh, do some sound readings. Is that correct? The occupational, uh, what do they call it? The occupational certificate. The certificate of occupation. Yeah. Yeah. The council has recommended we do a reading after it's been installed. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Can I ask why you're doing one after and you're not also doing one before? Do you have a reading for what the ambient noise is now? We haven't been asked no. by council to do it. Okay. Um, if I'm not sure who to who to ask or if I could ask mm. you, my understanding is that if you want to confirm what the noise is um, after you put the fence up, you can't really test what it was no. before. And so we've got nothing, compare. you have nothing to compare with. Um, can I, uh, thank you, can I ask through you to the most relevant member of staff then? And I've seen... Um, some correspondence uh, about later or yeah okay yeah the suggestion from Mr CEO is perhaps during the debate we could That's ask the fine. questions of Happy officers to ask that. Um, yeah. so I will be asking a question about this. okay thanks Al. thank you uh, question Councillor Edwards thank you making um, in a letter to one of the neighbouring residents, you indicated that landscaping, including thick bushes around the rear play space and double glazing were envisaged for the development to reduce the noise um, for the neighbours. Can you please comment um, as to why there is now no landscaping proposed for the rear play space and confirm whether double glazing will be used in the development? So again, the like a landscape architectural drawings were not requested as part of the DA application. Um, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, we, we're we open. We want to build a rich garden out there at the back and around the building. So it's a, it's a place where children become inquisitive in the garden. Mm. So there'll be hedges, there'll be trees. We're actually going to take the trees. There's a couple of orange trees we want to transplant into the future so that they stay in the in the garden. So we go to every effort to make sure that that garden is very rich with mm. hedges uh, to cover the fences, the back walls, um, trees in there. And we'll be using double glazing, not only for noise, but for energy efficiency of the building. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Council. Uh, maybe a follow-up to Please. the relevant staff member. Um, I was under the impression that we did receive the landscaping um, and that's what we were looking at in the council report, um, and that it in, it included the rear space, but there was there was nothing shown there. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Christie? Uh, thank you for the question and and for you making. Yeah, so the the plans that were provided, the site plan, they indicate landscaping in the front of the property around the um the car parking area. They don't indicate any landscaping in the in the rear. It doesn't include it occurring, but it's not shown on the plans. Follow up. <laughs> One follow up, please. Um, maybe to uh, Mr. Christie. Uh, is it not correct that the open space for the rear play area is is the minimum that's required already um, for childcare? And that, perhaps that might be um, a question during debate. Are we happy for that, Mr. S just getting advice in terms yep. of the the protocols of the public forum? Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Just um, clarifying that. Thank you. So um, you can take that on notice for later. Any questions for our guest speakers, councillors? In that case, thank, thank you for you. your time. <clears throat>
Next, we have Mr. Dean Kelly in the item 13.14, the development application, the Child Care Centre in Sackville Street does not support council's preferred recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Mayor King and fellow councillors, thank you for the opportunity to present at this public forum. My name is Dean Kelly and my property abuts the proposed child care centre at 698 Sackville Street. Our opposition to this development has not changed and we still have major concerns. I believe the site of this child care centre is inappropriate, unsuitable and, and unsafe. Residents of Sackville Street are shocked with the traffic assessment that was presented in the development application assessment report. With respect to the Orbi traffic team, this DA assessment report does not paint an accurate picture of the current traffic conditions that are experienced by the residents and road users of Sackville Street. We all question the, the valid, validity of the report. The assessment report incorrectly states that it will be approximately 60 vehicle movements to and from the centre each day. While well, the spot -o traffic report accompanying the DA states that there'll be approximately 120 vehicle movements per day. Reading all submissions contained in the business papers, it is evident that both residents and road users consider traffic as being a major problem in Sackville Street. Many residents have lived in Sackville Street for decades and know the traffic conditions better than anyone and have submitted objections to this development. It's their street. The Kings, the Todds, the Billays, the Bars, the Sergeants, the McRae's, the Munts, the list goes on. They have serious concerns that the trains change traffic conditions that this development presents will put road users' lives at risk. I've spoken to police, school bus operators, road users and residents, and all have come back to the same conclusion. I was surprised to read the assessment report. The local traffic committee concluded that the pr proposed development does not pose an an unacceptable risk to traffic safety. As the minutes of the local traffic committee meeting held on the 16th of June, 2022, shared my concerns. Vehicle speeds, proximity to, round, proximity to Pill Street roundabout, on-street parking issues, the shortfall in car park spaces were all concerns of the committee. These concerns have again been confirmed in previous reports conducted by police and Aubrey City of campaigns that were reported in the border mail that continually nominate Sackville Street as a dangerous street for motorists. This development will be to the detriment to the current and future streetscape of Sackville Street and around surrounding residential neighbourhood. And contrary to the New South Wales Child Care Planning Guidelines, section C1 and C5. The size of the proposed building has been reduced and now the setback from the front boundary is in excess of 26 metres, as opposed to six to seven metres for other dwellings in the street. This siting of the building behind the commercial car park does not reflect that of a residential dwelling and is completely out of character with the siting and streetscape of other homes in Sackville Street. Since the community forum, the building was set back a further 2.5 metres to accommodate the larger car park to the further detriment to the streetscape. Council plan has justified, justification for this departure was to compare this car park to the TAFE car park 100 metres to the north, which is completely unacceptable. The DA assessment then makes contradictions by stating that car parks within front setbacks are generally discouraged in residential settings. External play areas abut residential lots, which again contravene section C11 of the New South Wales childcare planning guidelines and further emphasise the inappropriateness of the site. The assessment report states that in, in order to meet the outdoor play area size requirements provided in the guidelines, the location of the play areas is very limited on this site and it is considered unavoidable to play areas abut residents. The council consider amenity impacts caused by this constraint to surrounding residents as acceptable without an acoustic report prepared by a suitably qualified acoustic professional. This oversight, again, is contrary to section C24 of the New South Wales Childcare Planning Guidelines. According to the New South Wales Childcare Planning Guidelines, the planning objectives seek to promote high quality planning and design of childcare facilities, ensure that childcare facilities are compatible with the existing streetscape, context, 
and neighbouring land uses and minimise any adver adverse impacts of development on adjoining properties and the neighbourhood, including the natural and built environment. As mentioned above, the DA and design response has had little regard to these guidelines. The site at 698 Sackville Street is completely inappropriate and unsuitable for a childcare centre and will have a detrimental effect on the safety of road users, the streetscape, the local residential amenity, which is completely unacceptable and it is not in the public interest. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Kelly. Councillors, do um, anyone have a question for Mr. Kelly at all? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Welcome everyone to the council meeting being held in the council chambers for this Monday, the 26th of September. We'll begin with the opening affirmation and acknowledgement of country. We gather to represent the people of Albury who have entrusted us with this task. May our efforts be blessed with insight, wisdom and common sense. May our personal values give us honesty and courage to serve our community effectively and with respect for all. We would like to acknowledge the Wiradjuri people as the traditional custodians of the land that we meet upon today and pay our respects to the elders past, present and future for they hold the memories, culture, tradition and hopes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that contribute to our community. This council meeting is being webcast and recorded. By speaking at the council meeting, you agree to being recorded and webcast. Please ensure that if and when you are speaking at this council meeting that you are respectful to other people and use appropriate language. Aubrey City accepts no liability for any defamatory or offensive remarks or gestures made during the course of this council meeting. An audio recording will be made for administrative purposes. Item CM3, conflict of interest declarations received and disclosure of political donations. Mr. CEO. Thank you, Mayor King. Um, just reiterating uh, an earlier conflict of interest declaration from Councillor Callahan, a non pecuniary less than significant. Brief description is that the uh, family member of Councillor Callahan's lives in Sackville Street. Um, the item relates to item uh, 13. Point one in the council meeting papers to do with the development application for Sackville Street um, Child Care Centre proposal. And Councillor Callaghan intends to stay in the chamber and participate in debate and vote. Uh, second um, conflict of interest for this evening is from Councillor Ashley Edwards, a non pecuniary less than significant conflict of interest. Um, the description of the conflict of interest is that Councillor Edwards conducted a cultural heritage assessment within the portion of the regional jobs precinct study area for a former employer. Um, the item number this relates to is CM 17.1 regional jobs precinct master plan and the action that Councillor Edwards intends to take is to declare a conflict and remain in the chamber. And the final one is from myself as CEO um, a pecuniary interest relating to the CEO performance review for 21-22, um, item CM 17.2, um, and the action I intend to take is to leave the chamber when the matter is discussed. Thank you, Mayor King. But just a note on disclosure of political donations and the requirements under the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. The Act under Section 10.4 requires that a person submitting planning applications or submissions regarding a planning application uh, is required to disclose any reportable political donation and or gifts to any local councillor or employee of the council. Reportable political donations include those of or above $1,000. In dealing with development applications, councillors need to take into account specific planning matters contained in the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. Accordingly, the provisions of section 4.151 of that act Act are set out in the Council Officers Report 
detailing planning issues to be considered. The Local Government Act 1993 Section 375A requires that a division be called whenever a motion for a planning decision is put at a meeting of the Council. Planning decision means a decision made in the exercise of a function of Council under the Act, including a decision relating to a development application, an environmental planning instrument, a development control plan, or a development contribution plan, but not including the making of an order under Division 9.3 of Part 9 of that Act. Thank you, Mayor King. Thank you, Mr CEO. Item CM 4.1, apologies. Councillor Cameron is an apology. Uh, happy to Councillor Black. Thank you. I'm happy to move that council receive, note and accept the apology of Councillor Cameron and grant leave of absence for the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And we have Councillor Baker, sorry. Thank you. Happy to second that, Mayor King. Thank you, councillors. We'll put that uh, to a vote. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. CM 4.2, attendance by councillors at a meeting by audio visual link, which we have no one, so that doesn't need to be put. Mayoral minute, there are none, which brings us to CM 6, action plans. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mayor King. I move the following action plans be received and noted. One, actions complete for noting only. Two, actions awaiting response from external parties. Three, actions in progress. And four, long term issues more than three months. Councillor Betridge. You, Mayor King, happy to second. Councillor Thurley, do you wish Thank to speak to me? Happy to put the motion yes. in that case. Councillors, those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Item CM7, confirmation of minutes of previous meetings. CM7.1, minutes of the council meeting held on Monday, the 12th of September, 2022 at 6.31pm. Councillor Glacken. Thank you. Through you to move the recommendations motion that the minutes of the council meeting held on Monday, 12th September, 2022 at 6.31pm be confirmed. Thank you. Councillor Callaghan. Happy to second the motion making. Happy to put the motion, Councillor Glacken. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you. CM8, reports from community forums. There are none. CM9, notices of motion or notices, <clears throat> pardon me, of rescission. CM9.1, notice of motion, natural burials. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mayor King. Um, I move that council staff prepare a report to council within three months outlining the opportunities and impediments to offer natural or green burials at the Glen Morris Cemetery, in addition to the existing services of cremation and traditional burial. Uh, Councillor Callaghan. Happy to second the motion. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, uh, Mayor King. Um, it seems to me that the funeral industry has become an industry. And there are very few options available to people other than burial and cremation. And a number of council, all states in Australia now have this option for a natural burial. That is a burial, not to the depth of six feet, but at a much lower depth where the body will decompose in a reasonably short time. There are five places in New South Wales that offer this service already. And it's um, just something that I believe we should look at ourselves to see if there's an alternative. Glen Morris has a beautiful natural setting um, surrounded by bushland. And most of these places in New South Wales and other parts of Australia are in that sort of context in bushland. There is no memorial headstones. Basically, if people want, they can be giving, given the GPS coordinates of the grave. Um, and a tree or a rock may be placed there, but that's about it. I just think it's another option. Um, and I would encourage staff in looking at this motion that they also survey our local funeral services to see if they have any interest or they have any requests in this way. 
uh, I just think it um, offers another alternative for people uh, who are grieving the loss of their loved ones. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Councillors, any questions, any speakers for or against? In that case, Councillor Thurley, are you happy to put the motion? Okay, councillors, those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. CM10, presentations and deputations, there are none. CM11, reports or minutes of committees and working parties. CM11.1, Lauren Jackson Sports Centre Advisory Committee meetings from the 17th of August, 2022. Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd like to, to move that the minutes of the Lauren Jackson Sports Centre Advisory Committee meeting held on Wednesday, the 17th of August, 2022, at 6pm be confirmed. Councillor Betridge. You second that, Mayor King. Thank you. Councillor Bowen, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor King. Just to uh, note that, uh, unfortunately, the, the grant was unsuccessful uh, for the uh, development of uh, Stage 1 of the Lauren Jackson Centre, and uh, all user groups were notified. Uh, and also, just to note also that the Lauren Jackson Cup uh, for 2022 has also been cancelled due to Basketball Australia being unsuccessful with funding that submission, which is uh, very disappointing indeed. But otherwise, uh, we'll move forward and uh, continue with reapplied. Uh, and so hopefully we'll wait for the uh, outcome of the second round of funding. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Any other councillors wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Callaghan speaking for? Yeah, I just, um, you know, hope there's some solace for the stadium organisers and participants uh, with round two funding in November. So unsuccessful times too. So hopefully there's some good news to come in November. Thank you, Councillor Callaghan. Councillor Bowen, happy to put the motion <coughs> or did you want to sum up? Just quickly wrap up. I'd like to thank all the user groups for their um, support and patience throughout this time with the uh, with the muck around, uh, but uh, looking forward to hopefully uh, round two is successful. So thank you, happy to put the motion. Thanks. In that case, we'll put the motion. Those four. Councillor Thurley. We're putting a motion, those for, <laughs> those against, the motion is carried, thank you. Obviously a technical issue there with Councillor Burley's <laughs> laptop. <laughs> okay, item 11.2, minutes of the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee held on Wednesday, the 17th of August for 2022. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mayor King. I move the minutes of the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee meeting held on 17th of August 2022 at 10.30am be confirmed. Councillor Glacken. Happy to second. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak? Uh, just briefly, it was uh, simply a routine meeting to look at the Albury financial statements and uh, endorse them uh, to go forward for um, endorsement by um, the Audit Office. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Any other speakers in relation to that motion? In that case, happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Item CM 11.3, minutes of the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee held on Wednesday the 7th of September. I just did that, didn't I? I thought that, no, that was two lots of minutes. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying. Two lots of minutes. The minutes of the Audit and Risk and Improvement Committee held on Wednesday, the 7th of September. Quite correct. Thank you. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you. Through you, um, Madam Mayor, to move the recommendation as a motion that the minutes of the Audit, Risk and Improvement Committee meeting held on Wednesday, 7th September 2022 at 10.33am uh, be confirmed. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Councillor Thurley? Seeing that motion. <laughs> Councillor Glacken, do you wish uh, yes, to speak? Yes, we um, did indeed review the um, financial statements again at this um, meeting. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Any other comments for or against? We're happy to put the motion in that case. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. CM12, documents for sealing. CM12.1, Councillor Betridge. Thank you. Through you, Mayor King, I'd like to move that Council authorise its seal to be affixed to the documents outlined below in the presence of two signatories authorised to affix the seal pursuant to Regulation 400 of the Local Government in brackets General Regulation 2005. 
and the council seal and management of legal documents and advice procedure. A, Albury City lease to Arana Community Centre in brackets Springdale Heights Community Centre, three years commencing the 1st of July, 2028 in brackets FIL 12 slash 00739. Thank you. Councillor Thurley. Second the motion making. Councillor Betridge, do you wish to speak to the motion at all? Uh, no, thank you, Mayor. In that case, any other speakers for or against? In, happy to put the motion? Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you. CM 13, officers' reports for consideration. CM 13.1, development application 10.2021.38949.1, Point one, Child Care Centre, 698 Sackville Street, Albury. Councillor Betridge. Thank you. Through you, Mayor King, I'd like to move an alternative motion to the one in the report. I'll just wait for it to come up. Understood. Thank you for that. I would like to move the council receives the contents of, the of this report and two refuses development application 10.2021.38949.1 for the construction of a centre-based childcare facility on land described as lot three on DP 13488 and situated at 698 Sackville Street, Albury for the following reasons. A. The development is inconsistent with the objectives and controls of the New South Wales Child Care Planning Guideline, specifically neighbourhood streetscape, character, front setbacks, and therefore is contrary to the provisions of section 4.1 brackets 1 brackets A brackets I of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act 1979. B. The development is inconsistent with the objectives and controls of Albury Development Control Plan 2010 being compatibility with the streetscape and impacts upon the amenity of adjoining properties, in particular noise, and therefore is contrary to the provisions of section 4.1 brackets 1 brackets A brackets III brackets of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act 1979. C. The design of the development will have an unacceptable impact on the streetscape and amenity of neighbours, in particular noise, and therefore is contrary to the provisions of section 4.15 brackets, one brackets B, of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act 1979. Thank you. Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mayor King. Happy to second that to bring this to debate. Councillor Betridge, do you wish to open debate? Thank you very much, Mayor King. I would. I speak in support of the motion before us this evening. My view is the role of council is to objectively weigh and consider the submitted information and make a fair and reasonable decision based on what is submitted and what is not. The report that has been presented this evening by the planning staff who are professionals recommends the granting of approval with conditions attached. I, as an elected representative of our community city tonight with the onerous task of making a decision and that decision is entirely based on the subjective nature of the New South Wales Planning Scheme and guided by the Child Care Planning Guidelines. The provision of child care is and should be regarded as an important service to our community. The need for more child care places is acknowledged. Is the location of the proposed child care facility appropriate? The R1 general residential zoning does allow for this development to proceed, to proceed with consent. That consent is contingent of the meeting the objectives set out in the Albury Development Control Plan and the New South Wales Child Care, Child Care Planning Guidelines. In my view, the proposal does not. The strong objections from neighbours that are directly adjoining the property to be developed, in my mind, have raised serious concerns in regards to the objectives of the Albury Development Control Plan, which are, A, to ensure non-residential development is permitted in residential zone responds to the environmental conditions of the site and the locality. B, enables non-residential development permitted in residential zones to be compatible with the streetscape 
and to contribute positively to the character of the locality in which the development is proposed. C, create reasonable amenity for occupants of non-residential development permitted in residential zones without, without causing unreasonable impacts on the amenity of the neighbours. The motion before us asks for my support. My support is forthcoming. I cannot with a clear conscience support a development that does not clearly meet the objectives of the Albury DCP. I would appreciate the support of my fellow councillors in supporting this motion this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Betteridge. Just get a quick question in, Councillor Edwards. Uh, thank question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Manking, and through you to the relevant member of staff. Just to follow up from my query earlier um, relating to Regulation 109 and the requirement for seven square metres for each child at 24 children, 168 square metres of unencumbered outdoor space. I suppose my question is, what is the definition of unencumbered outdoor space and is landscaping able to be included or does that then reduce the unencumbered outdoor space? Mr. Christie. Uh, thank you for the question and for you, Mayor King. Um, obviously the, the formal definitions are up to the childcare agencies who, who actually do those, but the way we interpret unencumbered open spaces allows the children to play in that area. So for example, I would consider a tree to be unencumbered open space, except obviously where the trunk was, but children can play. Um, but obviously if it was say a landscaped garden area where they're not allowed to go, then that would reduce the ability for children to be able to go into that area. Follow up. Thank you. And a follow-up question. Um, what is the current area of unencumbered outdoor space? Thank you for the question again and for you, uh, Mayor King. So on the plans, it's indicated 168.3 square metres, so just in excess of 168. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Councillor Glacken also has a question. Uh, yes, uh, thank you through you, Madam Mayor. Um, it's a follow-up uh, question I alluded to uh, earlier during the um, green meeting, um, it, and it's about the acoustic report. So my understanding... Um, uh, in whichever document it was that I read, uh, that uh, an acoustic report would be required um, post installation of the uh, noise barrier fence. Um, my question is really, why would you do um, a report or a, um, undertake an acoustic report subsequent to uh, installation of the fence and not also prior to, what, what do you hope to determine by only having it after as opposed to before and after to measure that, that gap? Mr Christie. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question and for you, Mayor King. In regards to the report, it requires it to be provided to council prior, uh, sorry, post installation of the fence. And the idea is to look at the veracity of the fence. Uh, obviously, to undertake that report, an acoustic person would need to take some readings prior to the installation of the fence. And then once the fence is in place, they could then judge it against the readings they may get posted. So the reason why it's in the prior to occupation is obviously that's prior to them moving in. But the report process would be that they would take some readings prior to the installation of the fence. Then once the fence is installed, they would then take some readings and indicate how the fence achieves compliance with the noise requirements. Okay, a follow-up follow if I may, yes. uh, through you to the most relevant member of staff. Um, it, I didn't um, gain um, uh, confidence from um, my earlier question during the community forum um, for the with the proponent um, that they understood that they were to take that reading beforehand as well. Is that made perfectly clear um, in the documentation? Mr Christie. Again, thank you for the question and for you, Mayor King. It might not be 100% explicitly clear in the wording within the consent, but it does require the condition to show how they satisfy the requirements of the noise guidelines. And the noise guidelines themselves talk about taking readings before. So an acoustic report is already theoretical. And then this is around a statement about how they achieve those gains. So it's not explicit in the consent condition itself, but it is explicit in the guidelines of how to undertake an acoustic report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Uh, speaker for the motion, Councillor Callaghan. 
Thank you, Mayor King. Um, this evening, I cannot support the development application for 698 Sackville Street. There is much lived experience and evidence to suggest that Sackville Street is not, a, is not safe in regards to traffic flow. Access in and out of properties along this street have proven to be dangerous. It is noted in the report that there is often in excess of 7,000 plus movements each day. I am concerned for the safety of those picking up, dropping off and for young children. As stated in the previous community forums and again this evening by Mr Billet, what a travesty it would be to see a child injured or worse still killed. Sackville Street among others in our community have been identified as a slow down street with signage indicating this very slogan to those who utilise it. I agree that the traffic report does not validate the lived experience of the community and residents in close proximity to the proposed childcare centre. The traffic report is subjective, and on that note, I am not convinced that 698 Sackville Street to be a safe place for a childcare centre. I agree with Councillor Glacken. I would also think that the development application would require an acoustic assessment before approval, not retrospectively. I'm sure your intentions, Ms Anatoon, are true and honest. Wanting to provide an educational and nurturing care that I have no doubt your 17 years experience and expertise is beneficial to our community. Whilst I understand the need for and importance for childcare facilities, this is simply not a safe location. Sorry. Thank you, Councillor Callahan. Speaker against, Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you. And through you to speak against the motion, um, which is the alternative motion on the board. Um, I have um, concerns and I've raised my concerns today uh, with reference to the acoustic report um, and I would have been happy to defer um, this um, development application tonight but I can't support um, that we would not uh, allow this to happen. Um, I believe that there needs to be further work undertaken and further clarification uh, with the um, proponents, but I do not think that we should be tonight um, having this, um, what appears to be a possible outcome uh, of this motion and that we would not approve this application. Um, and I foreshadow that should this motion not get up, I would be uh, very happy to uh, move an alternative motion. I would have uh, preferred to defer uh, the decision uh, tonight to enable uh, the developers uh, to uh, confirm that they understood and would be able to undertake um, further work with regards to the acoustic report uh, and answer the questions um, posed by Councillor Edwards and that be with reference to the outdoor um, play space. I cannot support um, the suggestion that it is on that um, the application be refused on the grounds of traffic. Um, it's my understanding that uh, there are many people that live uh, in this street and if it is so dangerous, then those people should not be using their driveways either. Um, so I, I think that uh, we should not be uh, uh, supporting this motion tonight. I think we should instead look at a deferral uh, to allow the developer to uh, undertake further uh, work uh, and to have a better understanding of the requirements uh, to enable uh, the development to take place. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Speaker for the motion, Councillor Edwards. Uh, thank you, Making. 10 years ago, I had to put my first child on a waiting list for childcare months before she was even due to be born. So I understand that the demand for childcare in Albury is high and it hasn't changed since that time. And that families are still struggling to get care for their children. So they can participate in work and study and that their children can receive quality early childhood education, which is so important for the first five years for children to thrive. While I'm very aware of the need for more childcare in our city, I cannot support a development that doesn't prioritise children's safety and wellbeing. I feel that there are too many competing issues for this development on this lot at this location. I have to respectfully disagree with the staff assessment of traffic. As a parent, I feel this area isn't safe 
and our own traffic committee also had concerns about the proximity to the roundabout and speed. I've read numerous submissions from neighbours about their concerns around traffic and parking, and I personally observed the fast traffic at this location and noticed that residents often themselves don't park on the street, which I assume is because they feel it isn't safe to do so. To mitigate the traffic and parking issues, the development proposes a large front car park. However, there's no separation between pedestrian access and that car park. Therefore, the development does not provide a safe environment for pedestrians both on and around the site, which is an objective of the New South Wales childcare planning guidelines. The size and location of the car park on the lot also creates a poor outcome for the streetscape and has meant that the size of the building and the rear outdoor play space have had to be reduced to their bare minimums, as we heard. Because of this, there is no scope to include landscaping around the outdoor playscape to address the acoustic concerns expressed by the neighbouring residents and as promised by the developers in letters to the neighbours. It's unclear if the proposed fence around the play space will be adequate to reduce the impact of noise because the applicant did not commission a report from a suitably qualified acoustic professional, despite that also being a consideration of the childcare planning guidelines to meet the objective of minimising the impact of childcare facilities on the acoustic privacy of neighbouring residents. With no room for landscaping in the rear play space, I also have concerns about the inadequate provision of shade and positive natural spaces for children to learn and play. I'm not opposed to childcare in residential settings or high traffic locations. My own children attended childcare in Aubrey in residential settings and on busy roads. However, both those centres provided drive-through pick-up and drop-off parking and were able to include significant landscaping in their play spaces. Overall, the way this development has attempted to address the issues of traffic and parking has resulted in a poor design outcome for safety, early childhood education and the amenity of neighbours due to it being res restricted by the small lot size. We do need more childcare, but we need well-planned childcare. And as such, I support the motion to refuse the development. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Uh, speaker for the motion, Councillor Baker. Thank you, Mayor King. I will be speaking for the motion and against this proposal. I can understand our plan as recommending approval for this development. However, I do note this will be the first commercial business, if it was successful, that is. Um, this will be the first commercial business with customers coming and going during weekday operational hours in this residential street between Poole and Elm Streets. A seven Car, car park is located within the front setback, which is generally discouraged and will result in a significant change to the streetscape and character. This area of Sackville Street is not in a heritage conservation area and is therefore not considered an area of important streetscape and character that should be conserved for its heritage value. So a childcare centre in this spot is permissible. But what I do have trouble with, and for me, this direct, directly relates to the opening affirmation before every council meeting where we state, may our efforts be blessed with insight, wisdom and common sense. The location of the childcare entry, some 30 metres away from a busy roundabout, to me, there is an unacceptable and unnecessary risk of serious accident. I envisage there will be vehicles from the north trying to turn left into the centre, vehicles leave, leaving either turning left or trying to cross the traffic to head north, and the northbound traffic attempting to turn right into the centre, all on a busy through road where the speed limit is 50, but the 85th percentile is 54 kilometres in an hour. To me, the common sense solution is to refuse this DA. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Councillors, if there's no further debate, Councillor Betteridge, do you wish to sum up? Uh, just very quickly, thank you, Madam Mayor. I thank my fellow councillors for doing the research, looking into this and coming up with some strong points for and against. I believe that this motion, even though proponents of the Child Care Centre will not be happy with it, I think is necessary. And this, 
I'm quite comfortable to put forward. And thank you. Thank you, Councillor Betridge. I'll now put the motion in division. Councillors, those four. Councillor Thurley, Councillor Callahan, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Bowen, Councillor King, Councillor Betteridge, Councillor Baker. Those against? Councillor Glacken. The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Item CM 13.2, provision of air conditioning services panel contract 22 slash 00881. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council accepts the panel contract tenders from Place Air Propriety Limited, Real Refrigeration and Albury Gas Works Propriety Limited for the schedule of rates panel contract number 22 slash 00881. Provision of heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration services for a three year period commencing 1 November 2022 for an estimated contract value of $750,000, including GST. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you. Happy to second Councillor Thurley's motion. Thank you. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion? No, at thank all? you, Mayor King. Happy in that case, we will put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. CM 13.3, New South Wales Public Spaces Charter. Would a council like to move that? Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Making. I move that Council A, adopt and become a signatory to the New South Wales Public Spaces Charter and B, implement the 10 charter principles and incorporate them within public space practices, policies and procedures. Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Mayor King. Happy to second the motion. Uh, do you wish to speak to the motion first up, Councillor Edwards? Uh, no, thank you, Mayor King. Councillor Glacken, a question? Uh, yes, through you to the most relevant member of staff, Mayor Mayor. Um, it's with reference to um, one of the sections that um, uh, makes reference to environmental. Um, and I uh, looked in a number of sections within the document to try and find the answer to this question. Uh, and it's with specific reference to um, smoking and smoke-free environments. Uh, and I wasn't able to find it anywhere in the document. And I'm conscious of the fact that certain um, spaces within New South Wales public spaces are smoke-free, but not all of them. Um, and it depends on the definition of public. So there's outdoor spaces, there's owned by the government, et cetera. Um, so I would like to ask our staff if we could, um, does this include such as smoke-free areas, um, uh, noting that it's been moving towards that uh, for a number of years now? Thank you. Mr Costello. Thanks very much for the question, Councillor Glacken, and through you, Mayor King. Um, the issue of smoke-free uh, is, is certainly not a, a simplistic um, answer to that, that one, and, and therefore I'd definitely have to take that question on notice to provide some some further advice around the the extent of um, smoke free provisions applying across the the 10 principal areas thank you thank you very much um and if it could be looked at, oh, yeah yet. um if it's possible to have that um provided with a a gaze over the um local government area um yeah. as well to just to get a handle on um because i know things have been moving towards that but i i just can't remember where we're up to with that Mr. CEO. Thank you, Mayor King, and through you. So those provisions reside in the public health regulations as opposed to the public space charter. So we'll be able to give you those uh, that information. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Any other speakers for or against or questions? Councillor Edwards, do you wish to speak, uh, sum up debate? No, thank you. In that case, we'll put the motion. Those for? Those against, the motion is carried. CM 13.4, draft Aubrey City unreasonable complainants conduct policy and procedure. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you through you to move the recommendation as a motion uh, that council endorse the draft, sorry, that council endorse the draft Aubrey City unreasonable complaint complainant conduct policy and procedure for the public exhibition for 28 days. And if no submissions are received seeking amendments, the draft Albury City Unreasonable Complainant uh, Conduct Policy and Procedure be adopted. 
So just to confirm it's that council endorse. Thank you. Councillor Betteridge. Second, Mayor King. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to open debate? Thank you, no. Any other speakers for or against? In that case, we'll put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. CM 13.5, review of mobile CCTV TV network trial. Councillor Thurley. It's right here on the screen for me. Yeah. Well, Wait for it to come up. Thank you. I move that Council A receive and note the review of mobile CCTV network trial. B, support and introduce an ongoing mobile CCTV network as part of the public CCTV system. C, receive a further report in the 2023-24 financial year on the resourcing requirements to expand the mobile CCTV network beyond existing assets. And D, continue to monitor and when available, apply for grant funding to expand the mobile CCTV network. Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Making. Happy to second the motion. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, briefly, um, Mayor King. Um, for some time now, we've had significant coverage uh, in the Albury CBD and uh, recently, more recently in Lavington, uh, significant coverage of parts of the business area there. The issue that we have had and we've received lots of feedback from the community is about things such as hoon driving. Um, we've had numerous uh, incidents at Mungabarina where the whole area has been torn up by people four wheel driving and hoon driving. Um, we did at one stage look at uh, fixed um, or removable fixed um, CCTV cameras, but there were occupational health risks associated with that. These items weighed in the order of 40 kilos and they had to be put way up a pole somewhere. So the idea of a mobile CCDV uh, on a caravan trailer type arrangement was seen as the best. The police have certainly endorsed this. Uh, it's helped them on a number of occasions uh, sort out problems. And our evidence shows that whenever they are placed, uh, bad behavior uh, stops in those areas. Um, it certainly reappears when they realize the camera's gone, but um, uh, this is uh, the fourth part of this um, is to apply for grant funding so we can expand the possibilities and the options. So this, I think, is a great move. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Councillor Betteridge. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd just like to ask a question of the relevant staff member. Um, CCTV trailer deployment locations, December 21 to June 2022. On the right of the column, license plate count, ALPR not deployed at certain stages. Could I just get some information, A, what ALPR is, um, what, do, what does it deliver and why in some instances is it on and some instances it is not? I just need some clarification on that because I don't quite understand it. Me, Ms Ford. Um, thank you for the question through you, Mayor King. Um, so... ALPR is actually automatic license plate recognition. So those there are three two different types of cameras on the mobile CCTV camera. Only two cameras can be deployed up the pole at any point in time. The automatic license plate recognition camera is actually a succinct camera that zooms in on a license plate and generally deployed when police are actually looking for a specific license plate of interest. Um, it does allow us to count number plates as it goes through as well, but we generally have that at the same time as we have a PTZ camera, which is actually a pan, tilt, zoom camera. The pan, tilt, zoom cameras provide a broader range of, um, of, of vision and allows us to actually see more um, evidence of uh, antisocial and whom behaviour, and that's why it was deployed in certain locations at that time. Both of them are mechanisms to identify offenders, um, and they all, they both provide evidence for the police to in, in assistance for prosecutions. Happy with that? Uh, well? Thank you for the clarification. Um, if I have anything else, I'll I'll ask it in an alternative moment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Councillor Glacken has a question. Uh, yes, I've got a follow up to Councillor Betridge's question. Um, and if I threw you to the most relevant member of staff. Um, uh, noting the example uh, 14, Mungabarina Reserve, and the um, uh, number plate recognition was not deployed, um, 
did the police um, request footage from that period? Were they able to utilise, if they did, the footage um, to deal with the offence of offenders because there must have been some offences carried out in that period? Um, so were they able to utilise the footage even though they didn't have the number plate recognition? Did Ms. they ask for that footage? Ms Ford? Um, thank you for the, for, for the question through you, Mayor King. Um, the actual, whether the police have actually requested the footage and have been able to use that, um, I will actually have to take that on notice and provide that information to you. Okay, thank you. And the reason I'm asking the uh, question is if we're putting it there because people are doing something that is illegal, um, then I'm not, not sure why we wouldn't try to apprehend some offenders. So that's why mm -hmm. I want to ask that question. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glack and Speaker for Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Mayor King. The mobile CCTV camera has proven to be effective. And I talk specifically in regards to Mungabarina and to the local Aubrey Skate Park. Uh, Mungabarina, where antisocial behaviours and hooning have resulted in destruction of the vegetation and a terrible visual appeal to a stunning culturally significant space and place. Once the mobile CCT camera was positioned there, there were no antisocial behaviours were reported or observed. Um, and the grounds of Munga Marina were a beautiful place to visit during this time. As soon as the mobile CCTV cameras were removed, people returned to their destructive patterns of treating it like their own four wheel drive paddock, tearing up the area once again. The Aubrey Skate Park, which is a jewel in the community and used by many um, and lots of different demographics as well, um, having visited this facility on many occasions, the mobile CCT footage acted as a deterrent for antisocial behaviours and destruction of public property. Yet again, once it was removed, the place was tagged, objects were thrown on the roof, and a level of overall safety had declined. As a result, there has been a permanent fixture of CCT camera installed at the skate park, which I commend. With the more permanent fixtures and mobile CCTV action must be taken if a crime is committed to deter behaviours Otherwise, complacently, complacency sets in and it really becomes tokenistic. Ways in which we could continue to improve its functionality of the mobile CCT camera would be to have the number plate recognition on at all times um, and circumnavigate access to power so that it is working and active at all times when it is deployed. The mobile CCTV camera has proven to be a successful trial. It has, been, it has enabled the ability to monitor and respond to criminal activity. The initiative has been co-endorsed by Crime Prevention Officer of Aubrey Constable Pat Skinner and Crime Manager Detective Chief Inspector Mick Stollenberg with the foresight for opportunities to grow and expand the mobile CCTV surveillance. The mobile CCTV trailer has proven its capabilities for crime prevention and has improved community safety and I happily and fully endorse the motion this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Callaghan. Another speaker for Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you. Through you to um, speak in support of the motion, and um, I know many uh, positive reasons uh, for this have been raised by uh, other speakers tonight already. Um, the To put a little um, bit of history uh, into this, it took some years for us to be able to achieve um, the uh, ability to have CCTV uh, in Albury, and we've had a, a couple of augmentations uh, of that, including most recently the, the mobile CCTV uh, opportunity on the trailer. And um, it has proven, in my view, uh, to be very successful. Uh, I support the fact that we will uh, continue to look for and apply for grant funding as and when it becomes available. I support that we will uh, continue uh, with ongoing uh, work to um, determine uh, what the most successful uh, and the greatest opportunities are that we have with the use of CCTV. Um, and I'm very conscious of the fact that until the police, the local uh, police um, were happy to come on board and partner uh, with Aubrey City, uh, it, was, um, it was not um, the program of having CCTV in, in Albury was not taken forward because what was the point of having the CCTV unless the police were going to work in partnership uh, and utilise that information. The police do need uh, to request uh, footage from Albury City Council. They don't have the ability to be able to 
uh, download that footage themselves. They have to come to Albury City as a third party to be able to get that information. And so my uh, thoughts are that we should um, most earnestly look at, uh, as was suggested by Councillor Kellahan, um, having the automatic um, number plate recognition turned on at all time. If you have that functionality, we should have to have it turned on because you cannot retrospectively obtain that information if you haven't had the cameras on at the time when they're recording the other movements. Uh, and so I think uh, we should be looking at that as a way forward as well. Um, but very happy to support this um, and very co most conscious of the fact that it has been a number of years to be able to get uh, the use of the CCTV um, or the application of the CCTV uh, to this point, and we're moving uh, forward even more, uh, having done this trial work recently. So it's very, uh, very good, a very good outcome, and really fabulous for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. If there's no further questions or debate, I will ask Councillor Thurley if he wishes to sum up. My fellow councillors have done the summing up uh, pretty well, so I won't speak anymore. Happy to put the motion in that case, councillors. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. CM 13.6, Albury City Investment Procedure Amendment. Councillor Edwards. Thank you, making. I move that Council A endorses the draft revised investment procedure as presented to Council. B, public exhibits the draft revised investment procedure for a period of 28 days. And C, if no submissions are received suggesting changes, the draft revised investment procedure be adopted. Councillor Thurley. Second the motion, making. Councillor Edwards, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, briefly. Uh, after advocacy from our CEO, T Corp has agreed to our request to raise the amount that Aubrey City can invest with each of our locally owned and operated banks. Hume Bank and WAW from 5% to 10% of our portfolio. This is great news and a really wonderful advocacy outcome for which I'd like to thank our CEO. Um, I'd also like to note that Hume Bank and WAW support the growth of our region and they also do not support the fossil fuel industry, which means that more of council's public funds are being invested sustainably and in support of our vision for a net zero future. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Councillor Thurley. Just briefly, because this has uh, been a long-running saga, um, it started in my mind when T Corp said that if we borrowed from these banks, we would not be able to borrow from uh, IPART, uh, from the local government, um, the Treasury. And we immediately said this is totally unfair to small regional banks. And given the way we see the big banks moving out from time to time, it's vital that we support these smaller banks. And I'm really pleased that our lobbying has convinced IPART that they were wrong in the first place and have come to our view. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you, through uh, to ask a question. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Through you to the most relevant member of staff, um, can that most relevant member of staff confirm whether the other local government areas within our region have also been able to avail themselves of such an opportunity if that most relevant member of staff member knows, uh, noting that um, there are a number of uh, councils within our area who were also seeking uh, such uh, permission from T Corp as well, or such advantage from T Corp. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Finlayson? Yes, thank you through the for the question through you, Meking. Uh, at this stage, Albury City is the first to receive this uh, uh, additional benefit, um, but no doubt um, we'll be able to share this news with our neighbours who also are in a similar circumstance that they will also then be able to apply um, to reflect their own circumstances to T Corp and allow that change. Thank you. Um, can I ask through you, Madam Mayor, that um, our staff do indeed um, make contact with our regional uh, councils, uh, but also consider the possibility of um, making local government New South Wales aware of our um, gain uh, and that that might be, be a benefit to other similar councillors. Mr CEO? Yes, certainly, and it was a subject of a previous motion from this council to LG New South Wales. 
very Thank appropriate. Thank you, councillors. And Mr. CEO, uh, Councillor Edwards, do you wish to close debate? No, thank you, making. <laughs> Therefore, we'll put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. CM 13.7, June quarter budget review. Councillor, I wish to move a motion. Councillor Thurley, thank you. Thank you, Mayor King. I move the council receives and notes the analysis of all researchers' financial performance for the 2021-22 financial year compared to forecast. Councillor Glucken. Happy to second. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion? No, thank you, Mayor King. Councillors, any questions or debate? In that case, happy to put the motion, Councillor Thurley. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. CM 13.8, draft social and sustainable procurement policy response to public exhibition. Councillor Callaghan. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. I'd like to propose an alternative motion, please. We will get that up for you. There thank you, you Mayor King. Thank you. I'd like to move that Council A acknowledge the submissions received regarding Aubrey City's draft revised social and sustainable procurement policy and B adopt Aubrey City's draft revised social and sustainable procurement policy, including recent amendments. And C review the benefit to the local region policy element of Aubrey City's social and sustainable procurement policy within the next 12 months. Councillor Edwards. Happy to second the motion, Mayor King. Councillor Callaghan, do you wish to speak to the motion? I do, thank you, Mayor King. Um, I would like to see a review of the policy in a year's time. I believe as a council and as a community, we have an opportunity to better engage with our local providers to improve the process and in particular, revisit the 10% weighting to local businesses to improve our circular economy and build capacity in local services and trades to the benefit of our local region and Australian manufacturers. It is important to reduce our footprint and inject our local economy by choosing and investing in local businesses and its people. I'm not sure what the magic percentage is or what it should be. However, over the course of the year, we can engage directly with local businesses to ensure we're investing wisely. Buying local supports local and supports our economy. It reduces our carbon footprint and builds and strengthens connection within our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Callaghan. Any other speakers for or against or any questions in relation to the, to the motion? Councillor Callaghan, happy to put the motion? Thank you, Mackie. Okay, in that case, councillors, those for, those against, the motion is carried. Item CM 13.9, Draft Aubrey City 2021-22 Financial Statements. Council would like to move a motion for this. Thank you, Councillor Glucken. Thank you, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, that Council A, to move the motion as a recommendation, oh, sorry, the recommendation as a motion, that Council A receives and notes the Aubrey City Draft General Purpose and Special Purpose Financial Statements for the year ended 30 June 2022 and authorises the Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Chief Executive Officer and Aubrey City's Responsible Accounting Officer to sign the statement by councillors and management in accordance with Section 4132C of the Local Government Act 1993 and the Local Government Code of Accounting Practice and Financial Reporting prior to the submission of Aubrey City's financial statements for audit. Thank you. Councillor Thurley. Again, the motion making. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Councillor Glacken, did you wish to speak to the motion at all? Uh, yes, uh, this is indeed um, the uh, very much the large part of the uh, last two meetings that uh, Councillor uh, Thurley and I were at as part of the audit committee, and this is indeed what Councillor Thurley was referring to um, with the minutes. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification and confirmation. Councillors, any questions or debate in that case? Councillor Glucken, happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. CM14, officers reports for noting. CM14.1, Draft Riverina Murray Regional Plan 2041, Aubrey City submission. Councillor Glacken. Thank you through you to move the uh, 
recommendation is a motion that council receives and notes the report of the draft Riverina Murray Regional Plan 2041 and submissions to the New South Wales Department of Planning and Environment. Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, King. Happy to second the motion. Councillor Glacken, do you wish uh, to speak yes. to it? Uh, just to confirm that um, it's really part of uh, what we as local government um, do and where we fit uh, within the New South Wales government uh, bigger picture planning. Uh, it's fabulous that we're ahead into 2050 and the New South Wales government is catching up with the Riverina Murray Regional Plan for 2041. Uh, so that means that we can uh, feed into that um, in a very significant way. Uh, it's important that we uh, run in, in sort of tandem or parallel um, with the New South Wales uh, government, but also with the um, other local government areas within our region. And so we all have to dovetail in uh, to make sure that uh, this has the possibility of becoming a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Any speakers for or against in that case? Happy to put the motion, Councillor Glacken. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Item CM 14.2, 2021-22 development statistics for the June quarter. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council receives and notes the information in the June quarterly development statistics report for 2021-2022. Councillor Bowen. Thank you. Happy to uh, second that motion. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, just to note that it's been a very busy period uh, and lots of development has been going on in the LGA. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. If there's no further questions or debate, happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. CM 14.3 investment balances for August 2022. Councillor Glacken. Thank you. Through you to move the recommendation as a motion that Council receives and notes the investment balances report for the month of August 2022. Thank you. Councillor Thurley. Second the motion making. Thank you. Councillor Glacken. Uh, yes, uh, councillors. Um, Thank you for the opportunity, Madam Mayor. Um, councillors will have noted that uh, the investment balances report indicates that the more recent investments are actually um, showing a, an opportunity uh, to create uh, some value for council, which is fantastic, um, and that will assist us into the into, very much into the future. Uh, so it's a bit of a change around uh, the last couple of months. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Uh, thank you, making Just like to note that it's great to see uh, further investment in non-fossil fuel uh, over the last few months. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Councillor Glacken, you happy for us to put the motion? Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Item CM 14.4, Aubrey Wodonga Tourism Signage Strategy. Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, making I'd like to move that the Council receives and notes the Aubrey Wodonga Tourism Signage Strategy Report. Councillor Betridge. You second, Mayor King. Councillor Callaghan, do you wish to speak to the motion at all? I do, just briefly. I, I think the, the mantra, which is to develop a tourism signing strategy for Aubrey Wodonga that responds to holistic, connected and integrated experience for the visitor will only enhance um, attracting people to our border and enhance our economy. I think it's a great idea and there's some wonderful strategies within the report um, to support um, local businesses to take advantage of this opportunity. So thank you. Thank you. Any other councillors wish to speak at all to the motion? Happy to put the motion then. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. CM 15 delegates reports for noting. There are none. Notice of urgent business, I believe Councillor Thurley. Thank you, uh, Mayor King. I simply wanted to um, note the uh, success and the work done by our uh, events team, uh, particularly Anne-Marie Ellis and her team in the Ride Around the Murray Festival. Uh, it was a brilliant festival, um, too many events to mention here, um, but it was well attended from the ones that I saw. And I think uh, after a couple of years without it, it was a brilliant event and our team need to be commended and helped to go even bigger and better next time. Comment. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Councillor Glacken? Uh, simply to add to Councillor Thurley's um, notes on uh, the River of Stories, um, in conjunction with that is the Ride Around the Murray 
um, uh, festival. So we've got the adults and, and the children. So it's, it's very important to be able to push those two. Thank you. Noted. And Councillor Callaghan. Uh, thank you, Meking. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the Hot House Theatre um, on our border. We, uh, congratulations to 25 years. I think what it's added to arts, culture and, and the history of that space has been They've shown much resilience um, over the 25 years and um, it's a major asset to our community. So well done to Hot House. Thank you, councillors. CM17, confidential matters. Councillors, would someone like to move that we go into confidential? Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mayor King. Uh, I move that council move into confidential to discuss item CM17.1 and 17.2, as these are confidential items exclusive of press or public on grounds that the matters relate to uh, the first one, Regional Jobs Precinct Master Plan Public Exhibition Support. Uh, conflict, uh, confidential item exclusive of press or public on the grounds that the matters and information are the following of well, the Local Government Act number 30 and that the report contains information that would, if disclosed, confer a commercial advantage on a person with whom the council is conducting or proposes to conduct business and Local Government Act 1993 number 30 section 10.42C and with respect to CO performance review 2021-22, a confidential item exclusive of press or public on the grounds that two, the matters and information are the following, a personal matters relating concerning particular individuals other than councillors, Local Government Act 1993, number 30, section 10A, 10A, 2A. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Councillor Glacken. Happy to second. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Are there any statements or submissions from the public regarding the reasons as identified for these confidential items, CM 17.1 and CM 17.2? Given there are no submissions received, councillors, do you wish to proceed with the motion to move into confidential? Those for, those against, the motion 